Welcome to In Focus. I'm Brian Jackson. My guest is Claudia Lanoff, Executive Director of the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Okay, how? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, as you said, I'm Claudia Lenhoff, and I'm the Executive Director at Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. I'm also a community organizer for Champaign County Healthcare Consumers, and I have worked there for over 15 years. Okay, uh, tell us a little bit about what the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers, what is their, their goal and what is their intentions to do? Okay, well, we're, uh, Champaign County Healthcare Consumers is a grassroots uh, consumer health advocacy organization, a citizen action organization. Our mission is healthcare for all and to make sure that consumers, the people who use the healthcare system, have a voice in the system. So a lot of the work that we do is, uh, you know, we try to advance policies and programs that give everybody access to health care, but we also work with people so that they can be part of that process. So we do a lot of education, we do advocacy, and we do community organizing. And uh, one important program that we have that I want to make sure and let your viewers know about is we have the Consumer Health Hotline, which is just our regular phone number. It's 352-6533, and I know that'll be put up at the end of this show. But that's the phone number where people can call us with any kind of question or problem that they are having with the healthcare system. And we have trained uh, advocates, volunteer advocates, and staff members who provide a free service to individuals to help them address their problem. Okay, um, how long has the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers existed? Uh, for 35 years, since 1977. So we've been around for a really long time. Okay, could you tell us a little bit about the, the uh, new, I mean, about the health, about the health care thing, about what's go going on with the Health Care Act right now and how it's going to affect people and, and basically who is affected by that? Sure. Well, um, the health reform um, bill, also known as the Affordable Care Act, was signed into law by President Obama in 2010. And uh, most Americans will be affected by, by that in one way or another. And many Americans are actually already affected by it because one of the things that this law did is it uh, implemented new um, regulations and protections for people who have health insurance. And uh, those benefits have already gone into effect. So for example, some of the things that have changed because of health reform is that there are new uh, benefits for children and young adults. For example, insurance companies can no longer deny coverage to children because of pre-existing conditions. So prior to 2010, insurance companies were able to do that. So for example, if a child, if a baby was born with a low birth weight and then had problems associated with that, in the past then when the parents tried to get health insurance for the baby, they could be denied coverage because of that pre-existing condition. So that can't happen anymore. Also, um, young adults can stay on their parents' insurance up to age 26, and, that, and it doesn't matter if they're married, it doesn't matter if they're in college, or if they're employed or not employed. They're able to get health insurance through their parents' health insurance plan up to age 26. So that has really helped to expand coverage for young people. Uh, then there's um, protections that have gone into effect for people who have health insurance. Insurance companies can no longer rescind or drop coverage. So if you have health insurance, like I have health insurance through my employer, um, or if you have an individual plan, if you get diagnosed with cancer, for example, the insurance company can no longer drop you and say, we're not covering you anymore. Um, so that, that's one thing that has changed. Um, also, insurance companies can no longer place lifetime limits on the coverage that they provide. And they have to spend a certain proportion of the premium dollars that they get, what people pay every month, they have to spend 80 to 85 percent of that on actually paying for health care. And so all of those things bring new protections for uh, consumers who have health insurance now. There's also a new program called the Illinois Pre-Existing Condition Plan, IPXP. Uh, this is for people who have been denied health insurance coverage because they have pre-existing conditions, and it's a program provided through the state of Illinois, and people who have been uninsurable previously can no, now go and get insurance through that. 
So those are some of the things that have happened since the law passed in 2010. Moving forward in 2014, do you want me to talk about that? Sure. Okay. Um, well, also, before I get to that, for people who have Medicare right now, the new benefits under the health reform law are that preventive services are now covered without an out-of-pocket um, payment required from the person who has Medicare. So if they go for their annual uh, checkup, they shouldn't have to pay you know, uh, out-of-pocket for that. If they are required to have an annual mammogram or colonoscopy, they shouldn't have to pay out-of-pocket for that. So those are new benefits for people who have Medicare. And the Medicare Part D donut hole is starting to shrink, so um, people should have to pay less out of pocket that way. In 2014 is when really the big, you know, the big implementation happens. That's when a lot of people who right now do not have health insurance will get health insurance as a result of this law. And one of the big things that's going to happen is that um, every state or almost every state is going to have what's called a health insurance exchange, which is just where people will go to purchase their health insurance. Um, it, it, it will be online or people can come to like our office, for example, and we'll help them sign up for their health insurance. But lower income people will be able to uh, possibly qualify for Medicaid uh, or be able to qualify for private or individual or small group health insurance plans and we'll find out if, depending on their income, if they can get a subsidy to help make their uh, monthly premiums more affordable to them. And um, so basically, there's going to be a huge expansion. Millions more people in the United States will get their health insurance in 2014 uh, through the exchange. Is there any age bracket to get the health insurance? Or do you have to be a certain age or is it for everybody? It will be for everybody. I mean, children obviously will get signed up by their parents. You know, their parents will go and purchase the insurance or get the insurance for children. Uh, for people who have Medicare, they won't need to participate in the exchange. I mean, really, it, Medicare is not going to be changed substantially. There may be more benefits like the um, preventive care, uh, not having out-of-pocket costs and so on. But people who have Medicare, their Medicare will still stay the same. It should improve a little bit. But really, the exchange will be for people who do not already have Medicare. So pretty much everybody else. Why was 2014 chosen as the date? Uh, and wh when was it chosen and why was 2014 chosen to get this done? I don't know why it was chosen. That's a good question. We wondered that as well when the law was, you know, the law was developed and then it was passed in, tw in 2010. And that was, um, that was part of the that was written into the law as part of the process for implementing health reform. And I think the reason that it was chosen is actually because the exchange is, states need a lot of time to get ready to do this exchange. It's going to be technologically um, very involved because um, people will get a lot of their benefits and resources through the exchange. So I think states needed that time to gear up to be able to do that. For example, uh, one of the things that people will be able to do through the exchange is uh, they'll be able to go on there and then they will put in their income, you know, and size of their family and all that. And the exchange is going to tell them whether they qualify for Medicaid, for example, as opposed to um, private health insurance. Um, because the Medicaid program is going to be greatly expanded and um, people will be able to qualify for it just based on their income alone. Well, if somebody goes to the exchange, let's say I'm a single individual, uninsured, and I make about $15,000 a year. When I go to the exchange, I'm going to find out that I will qualify for Medicaid, but the exchange is also going to let me sign up for it right then and there. And so that's very technologically complex because now you're talking about not just choosing an insurance plan, but you're talking about actually signing up for a state benefit where normally you would have to go to the local DHS office and have an appointment and fill out a bunch of papers and all of this. Now all of this will take place through the exchange. People will be able to sign up for Medicaid through the exchange. And so I think 
2014 was picked as the year to start that in order to give states the time to gear up to be able to, to do that. When can the in, individuals start signing up for the program? 2014, January 1, 2014. And I think people should expect uh, to hear a lot about it before that happens. I know Champaign County healthcare consumers, we're going to do a lot of work uh, to help people prepare so that they know when it's going to start and what they need to do and where they need to go and what their options will be. So people will hear a lot more about this I would say, you know, in 2013 and especially in the second half of 2013. Are there going to be, do you feel like there are going to be public hearings around the area to this by either the, in the, like in the schools or do you think there'll be public hearings held by various health care agencies here in town? Uh, there, there may be. I know we will do um, community workshops and things like that and we may try to bring um, you know, if there if there's um, good if there are good resources like from the state of Illinois or through the federal government, we'll try to bring them here as well and and make them available to people through workshops. But I know that our organization will be having, you know, workshops and community meetings and community education sessions and things like that uh, throughout the year to help people get informed and get ready. And we'll of course try to use you know media outlets such as this to help spread the word. Um, you know, Facebook, the internet, the web, radio, uh, you know, a lot of things. One thing that people can do if they sort of want to stay tuned and if they can do this, um, if they have the resources to do this, is they can go to our website, to the Healthcare Consumers website, and I know you'll show it at the end of this program, but there's a, there's a little section where they can click on Get Involved, and you can sign up for our email listserv and then you'll be getting regular information as health reform is being implemented. Would you like to add anything else on the program? I, I would just say that I think this is going to be a tremendous benefit to thousands of local consumers and healthcare consumers looks forward to being able to help people finally sign up for benefits and for many people to get health insurance coverage for the first time. And um, to just stay tuned and to call us if you have any questions or need more information or go to our website and um, check out the information there, but also sign up to be on our listserv and we'll keep people informed. Claudia, thank you very much for appearing on the program. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. My guest has been Claudia Lanoff, Executive Director of the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. I'm Brian Jackson. This has been In Focus. Bike lanes are pavement markings used to help bicyclists and motorists share the road. A bike lane is a dedicated travel lane within the street space for the exclusive use of bicyclists. Bike lanes make it easier for bicycles and motor vehicles to share the road by providing a separate space for each mode of travel. A motor should not park or drive in a marked bike lane unless it is necessary to make a right turn at an intersection, enter or leave a driveway, or park in a lane adjacent to the bike lane. Welcome back to In Focus. I'm Brian Jackson. My guest is Jane DeLuce, Executive Director of the Champaign County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome to the program, Jane. Thanks for having me. Okay, how did the Champaign County, what, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I have been in this area for about since 1996 after the, I worked for the Atlanta Olympics. And when I came back here, I worked at the university for the Alumni Association and for Campus Recreation. And then I came over to the CBB three years ago today. What is what does the Champaign County Convention and Visitors Bureau do? What is their main focus? We are the destination marketing organization for the area. So our job is to promote and sell Champaign County on locally, but more so regionally, uh, nationally, and internationally. Okay, tell us a little bit about some of the events that come to, Sham to uh, the county every year. Okay, well I think first most people think about football, Illinois mm -hmm. football games and Illinois basketball games, and those are, are very, what we're probably known a lot for is anything with University of Illinois Athletics. Uh, particularly when it's homecoming and Dad's Day weekends, that's when we see the biggest boost to our economy. 
I think um, other events that people might not think about as much is the Half Century of Progress show that happens in Rantoul every other August. We get about 100,000 people that come through a multi-day event up there, and that one is extremely significant to the area, especially with such a strong agriculture tradition that we have. And then the Illinois Marathon, Christie Clinic Illinois Marathon, is, has be quickly become what we are known for in the running community and known oh, yeah. internationally with that. Um, the Illinois High School Theater Festival is another one that happens in January every other year, and that's about 4,000 students that come over here and utilize the facilities um, on campus, and it's a great time of year for them to come because um, it's a slower time of year for us just with the weather. Um, there, another one, I think there's first pitch baseball tournaments, and those there's about eight every summer, and that happens um, with out at Dodds Park and some different parks around, and that's, that's a significant economic impact with the amount of baseball tournaments. And then soccer, we have two each, one fall, one spring, and that happens with the Illinois Football Club. And then, of course, coming up with IHSA football championships and also with the IHSA state wrestling championships. So Roger Ebert Film Festival, and then I have to be and say the new one that's coming here that we're most excited about for bringing here is the Bloomington Gold Corvette Show. And that will happen in June of 2013. Every year it'll be the last weekend um, in June, and that's supposed to bring in about 4,000 Corvettes and over 40,000 people. Okay, T tell us a little bit about um, how, much, how many people per year usually come t to come through uh, Champaign County to visit these events and how much revenue is generated per year to for, for this? Well there's not really a way to track every single event because we don't have a number to say there's you know 25 events or there's 250 events because there's a lot of large events and there's a lot of smaller events but I can tell you the numbers are staggering for this area we generate $58.8 million in travel generated payroll, which includes 2,460 jobs in Champaign County that are related to the tourism industry. Um, local tax revenues is $4.64 million, and that's a 3.2% increase over 2010. And in direct spending by visitors, it's $283 million. So the impact is significant for the people that come here, whether they're coming here for events, for business travel, or for leisure travel. So there's, there's a lot of reasons people come here, but the, but the amount of dollars that come in because of those people coming here is staggering. How many hotels are, and motels are there in Champaign-Urbana? And list some of the other places where you could visit in Champaign-Urbana. And, and, the, and the county? Yeah, within Champaign County, we have approximately 3,460 hotel rooms. And we're adding on a new hotel in downtown Champaign, which will be a high um, park place. And then we're also adding a Marriott Residence Inn, which is out by the Wingate and Candlewood Suites, kind of out by Shelby Motors. So w with addition of those, we, we always, we average around 3,500 hotel rooms in the area. List, uh, I mean, uh, that's going to be a, a big project, I guess, going on in downtown Champaign. I could really imagine how much it would really affect the, the Virginia Theater because a lot of people would come to the Virginia Theater and a lot of people would stay in the hotels that come from out of town to go see the Virginia Theater and other places in Champaign and around the county. Yeah, absolutely. The, having a downtown um, hotel for downtown Champaign is going to be quite an impact. I mean, not only do you have the Virginia Theater, you have the Art Theater, you have the or Orpheum Children's Museum, you also have a significant amount of restaurants and bars within a walking area. So it's, a, it's going to very much attract a leisure traveler or the smaller business traveler where it's smaller groups are four or five. So that will be quite significant for that area. And then on a more significant nature with our hotels, the I Hotel and Conference Center, the Hilton Hotel, and the Holiday Inn Hotel and Eastland Suites are our full meeting facilities. So those are the ones that attract the events along with hotel rooms that go with it. And then all of the other hotels are more for um, just room nights only and smaller rooms. How many conventions approximately come to the county? And do you know, list some of the bigger ones that might come here every year? And to the 
to the county? There, there are several hundred, I would say, that in, in kind of when you look at what the numbers is, every media, business traveler that comes here as it spends about $120 per day. So if you took a three-day conference of 150 travelers for a conference, you're generating about $54,000 for that one conference alone. So, you know, there's, we have a lot of research-based conferences that come here. Uh, qualitative research is one that happens every year. Um, there's, there's a lot of society of government professionals that come here. So we have um, a lot of associations in the area, and that can range from anyone doing research, uh, programmatic, or even association of accountants that are meeting here. A new market that's coming up more so because of the U of I Research Park are more high-tech conferences. So we have a lot of research being done in the area of technology, computer science, et cetera. Those, that we're seeing a surge in those types of events coming here. And while they may not be as many in the big numbers, it's a very, very dedicated group that will come here for that. Do you see the county really growing in, in, the, in the next few years, or do you see it, and how do you see it growing in the next few years? I think there, there's several things that are happening. The campus itself is getting bigger. You know, I remember when I was in school at U of I, many years ago, we had about 35,000 students, and now we have about 42,000 students at the university. So that in itself is a growth within the area. You then increase the number of faculty staff that work with it, the increase of, of support staff that, that work um, on campus. So that is going to be a significant growth. We're also continuing to build out in terms of facilities. There's a new athletic complex that is um, looking to be built out in the Clearview area, which is out by St. Thomas More High School. And it's about a 300,000 um, square foot facility. And when you take a building like that, you create more, you know, people coming in, coming in for tournaments. You might see more neighborhoods. Just the building of Central High School, and depending on where that's built, you might see growth and neighborhood growth that goes around that school if it's built in an outward area. And then we continue to bring in um, new businesses. And as new businesses grow, factories, you know, small business, whatever it is, we will, we will continue to see a growth in the area both with business recruitment and also business retention and increasing. What are some of the sites being considered for the uh, new uh, Champaign High School? Do you know? I, I don't know that. I think that there, I know they had talked about the one that had just been um, on campus and then there was some conversation about uh, solar research farm that is going to go on that particular land. I know they've talked about looking at the area north of town. They've looked at, at renovating um, the current Central High School area. And I, I remember one conversation about the area around Country Fair Shopping Center being brought up. So I think they're evaluating all of those options. I think there's some people that want to see it north and some people that want to see it south because of the new elementary school in Savoy that they, you would have a high school to complement that. But I'm not sure, I don't know that they know yet exactly what their top three um, places are that they're going to consider. What new businesses do you see coming to town that you know of? I mean to the county or the town or in the next maybe several years? That I don't know. I, I don't know. That's something for the Economic Development Corporation to be able to, to answer that a little bit more. I think that when you see, in, in regard to my industry, when you see a hotel being built, that you will see businesses that will supplement that hotel, whether it's additional restaurants, dry cleaners, florist, uh, you know, towel service, all of those things that go around with the hotel. Those businesses will either see increase in, in service or we will see new businesses crop up because of that. I mean, you, you look at what they're doing at the U of I Research Park and expanding in the area that they're looking at now down at, at First and Windsor, they're talking about having retail there. They're talking about having potential housing there. That's a whole different part of new businesses that we haven't seen because of the success of the U of I Research Park. Anything else you would like to add, Jane? Well, I think you know, when you talk about why people come here, an important um, thing to keep in mind is that we have you know, great attractions. People in the fall area think of the Curtis Orchard. They think of the planetarium, the Japan House. 
our outdoor parks, our forest preserves. Probably one that may not people all know is the Hardy's Reindeer Ranch, which is a lot of fun because you have the, the, the actual Alaskan reindeer that are here and it's available for anyone to see on their own or as a group. And then I think Gordyville is another one with the craft show that they do and the horse shows and the antique shows. That's a very big attraction to our area that you and I may not think about if that's not something you're going to see on a regular basis. And then our 11 museums. I mean, we have wonderful museums with the Museum of the Grand Prairie, the Cattle Bank, the um, Cranford Art Museum. There's quite a few for a lot of people to be able to see. There's, there's a lot to do here. And both for leisure travel and for business travel. But for, for leisure travel, um, a lot of people are coming here for the agritourism. We have, a, we, when we have groups that come in, such as a group of Norwegian visitors that came within the last week. They visited both the university, but they also visited Parkland. They visited AgriLiant Research. They had a catered lunch at Murray Farm. They uh, visited the crop science department out at the university. They, they toured the Morrow Plots. You know, there, there's a lot to see in the area of agriculture that brings in people from around the world. And we're, we spend a lot of our efforts working with those groups to bring them here to showcase this area. You could also indicate that uh, there's the two malls you could come visit, the uh, Marketplace Mall and uh, Lincoln and Champaign and uh, Lincoln Square in Urbana. We have wonderful malls and we have a lot of locally owned shops that go with it too. So for whether you want to go to businesses that you might be more familiar with that are more chain businesses or whether you want unique shops, we really have quite a bit and we have a lot of art galleries as well too that come in and um, unusual kinds of different kinds of shops that for unique gifts if you in you know the the walnut street tea company i mean there's there's a lot of places that people can visit here that they might not think of when they first think of champaign county what am i going to do there and there's a lot of a lot of things that we offer especially with the uh, football playoffs coming coming here the day the next the last the next two days after thanksgiving they would they would benefit a lot by shopping downtown Champaign and shopping downtown Urbana. Exactly, yeah. There's a lot of places for them to, to do either before or after their game, and we promote those. We, get, we give them sheets of information and our visitor's guide, and people go out and be able to explore the area. So there's, there's a lot for them to do, and I think that they, they, the goal is to have them stay a little bit longer, so come in and make sure they play their football game and, and then be able to enjoy the area, just as we do with other events. We, you know, with the marathon, we want them to stay after they run and get to enjoy the other things there are to do. Anything else, Jane? I think that covers it. I think it Thank you very much for appearing on the program. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. My guest has been Jane DeLuce, Executive Director of the Champaign County Convention and Visitors Bureau. I also want to thank my first guest, Claudia Lanoff, Executive Director of the Champaign County Healthcare Consumers. I'm Brian Jackson. I hope you all have enjoyed these programs and have been very informative. Thank you very much for, a, a, for joining me for In Focus.